This video is literally the reason why I've been put on this earth. Hello friends, my name is Lauren and welcome back to my channel. Before I begin talking about what this video exactly is, I want to say that this video, the whole point of it is to help readers of all different kinds find a book they will enjoy. Whether you are like myself and have this mess of a bookcase behind you, or you read the mandatory English book once a year, I want to help you find a book recommendation you will actually like. I have been wanting to film a book recommendations video for the longest time, but I've never just gotten around to actually doing it. I never thought the recommendation video would be good enough because there are still so many books I want to read and reread and always just want to put my best foot forward when it comes to books because I know a good recommendation versus a bad one could be the make or break to how people think of reading for like the rest of their lives. No pressure, of course. However, over the last month, I've had a bunch of my friends ask me for book recommendations or I've asked them if they wanted a book recommendation and I've actually been able to give a lot of different awesome book recommendations, I think personally to them. And I realized I kind of have this message Method of doing so. This method is kind of what I'm trying to film today for you guys to help anyone, whether you love reading or hate reading, find a book you will actually enjoy. So I want you to treat this video like a choose your own adventure story. Basically, I'm going to ask you a question and depending on which answer you choose, you're going to go to that part in the video. For example, if I ask you a question on whether you like A or B and you pick B, you might have to skip three minutes to see what option is next. We're almost ready to jump into the recommendations, but first I just want to make a quick notice. I read mainly young adult based novels which basically means the books are targeted towards a teenage audience. Of course, people younger and older are welcome to read these books, but it's just simply that the protagonist falls in the teenage years. I also read a little bit of middle grade, which is for ages 9 to 12, and also a little bit of adult, which is aged 18 and up. All the books I read, like 99.9% .9 of them, are fiction. So if you are looking for a non-fiction recommendation, I am sorry, this is not the video for you. However, if you're looking for a fiction book that targets one of those three age groups that I just mentioned, you are in the right place, my dude. And now this video I'm so excited to be filming today and talk to you guys about and give you all the recommendations is finally here. So without further ado, let's jump in. Question number one, are you looking for realistic fiction or fantasy fiction? What I mean by this is realistic fiction for me at least falls under the more based on a true story kind of way. Of course it's fiction, so it doesn't really follow a true story. But for example, it might take place at a local high school a job environment, a coffee shop, a adventure around the world, something we can easily wrap our minds around. A fiction fantasy story might involve some of those elements, like a real world situation, but there might be something different about it. For example, the easiest example I can think of is Harry Potter. It's in place in our world today, however, has this whole world of magic and elements like that. And so if you're looking for something more realistic, for example, The Fault in Our Stars, that would be in that category, or something like more Harry Potter would be more in the fantasy fiction side. So depending on your answer, please go to these parts in the video. So, you chose realistic fiction. My next question would normally be a series or standalone, which one you would prefer. However, all of my recommendations fall into the standalone category, so we're just gonna roll with it. Next, I kind of want to focus on themes and like subcategories you'll see in this novel. Are you looking for a book that has a focus around romance, mystery, high school university life issues, or social issues? Keep in mind, these categories will incorporate some of the other genres as well, especially romance being incorporated into a lot of them, but just as a general overall statement. Congrats! You have arrived at two recommendations. The first recommendation has a strong focus around chance versus logic, the heart versus the mind, and family relationships. The second rep is about love, acceptance, and finding yourself. So the first rep I have for this category is going to be The Sun is Also a Star by Nicole Yoon. This book actually has been recently turned into a movie, and I have to say both the book and the movie were really, really well done. It is a really cute story. It's fast paced. Her writing is really, really well done. Not too slow, not too fast, and there's always something to look forward to in the next coming chapters. The way the family conflicts really tie into this love story I find is so so cool and even though it is on the slightly unrealistic side of romance I do think it is really well done and could be considered realistic in such circumstances which is even a concept the book talks about itself. You have two people that randomly meet one day in New York City and for whatever reason they only have 24 hours to be together if they even stay together at all. A fantastic love story that I believe I gave four to five stars to and was a read that I read this year and really really enjoyed. My second book recommendation is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, also recently turned into a movie adaptation a couple years ago. This book kind of follows a boy named Simon who's struggling to figure out how to accept himself for being gay. He wants to find a boyfriend but doesn't really know how but also doesn't want people knowing because he's nervous about how people will react and all that kind of stuff. There are some moments where you can really feel for the characters and also many lighthearted moments that really dive into friendship, family, love, and just accepting yourself for who you are. And the way Becky Albertalli 
Holly really writes this book is phenomenal and the way the love is shown, the ending. Personally, I just loved this book. It was a wholesome read and I just really, really enjoyed it. So you're looking for a mystery book. Are you more interested with a side focus on friends or family? If you're more interested in a side focus on friends, then you've arrived at one recommendation. One of us is lying. I read this book a couple years ago, actually before it became like a cool book, and I'm really proud of myself for finding such a good book. I haven't read it in a couple years, but from what I remember, it was a great story. It was so cool to follow along. It essentially follows five teens, and for whatever reason, they are all connected in some way, not really by friendships, but just other life things. And this life thing essentially is one of their classmates dying. They're all suspected for the murder and basically you're trying to figure out who is lying. Originally this book was a standalone I believe but there's actually a second book coming out in the series now I guess in January so if you enjoyed this book stay tuned for that. Definitely take a look out for that. This is a book I want to reread sometime in the near future. It was really really good and it dives into like high school relationships, friendships, family drama, all that kind of stuff, and overall it was just really, really, really good. You're looking for a mystery novel with a side focus on family? Then congrats, you have arrived at two recommendations. The first one being We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book is beautifully written with such interesting characters and an interesting plotline. The narrator is almost an unreliable narrator in the sense that you don't really know exactly what's going on all the time, even though it might seem like you do in some cases. For people, you either love it or hate it. For me, honestly, I was just in awe by this book. Was it my favorite? favorite thing? No, but did I think it was really really well written, a strong story, and kind of just really enjoyed rereading it like literally the day after I finished it? Absolutely. This has strong family ties, strong family connections, a bit of romance in there as well, and overall the book is just written so well. This is the main thing that really stands out to me about this book is the writing and the way E. Lockhart is able to take their characters to like the next level almost. It was so, so good. It basically follows a couple rich families that every summer they go to like their summer home, see each other for the two months of the year, and this is really the old, only time they see each other. Now these families all have younger kids, so roughly in the teenage years, and they all also get together at the summer home during the summer and one summer something crazy happens and they're kind of putting the pieces back together of what happened and so it's really really good and I would highly recommend this book if it sounds of interest to you. My second recommendation is Confessions of a Murder Suspect. This series was actually recommended by one of my friends Megan and I have to say she was absolutely right by recommending me this book. It is fantastic. Honestly I don't remember too much about this series because I read it about three years ago but it is four books long. The third book left me screaming. This book also amazing. The way the characters are written, the family ties and drama that goes on, the way you kind of see pieces of the puzzle going together, and the strong voice the protagonist has is honestly just perfection and I loved the series so so much. So you're looking for a recommendation around social issues? Are you looking for a book with more of a focus on mental health, sexism, or racism? If you're looking for a recommendation that focuses a lot on mental health, then you have arrived at one recommendation. All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. This book is actually going to be turned into a movie very very soon. The film is already done so the movie is definitely going to happen. As to when it releases we don't know yet but I'm sure it's going to be a really really strong movie because this is a really really strong book. This book also has a focus around romance as well as two characters meet each other both not in the right head spaces and essentially they become friends and potentially even a little bit more than friends to try to figure out what's going on in both of their lives and try to help each other out whenever possible. This book I will say made me cry for the whole second half. If you like crying this is the book for you. This is all I have to say. If this book sounds interesting to you, I would highly recommend it. It has been a couple years since I've read it, but I'm hoping it is still as good as I remember it. If you are looking for a recommendation that has a focus on social issues with a main focus on sexism, you've arrived at one recommendation, Moxie. Moxie is a book that I read a couple years ago, but still to this day, absolutely love and got the biggest rush finally finishing it. It essentially follows our protagonist going to high school and she sees the sexist ways of her small town and school and wants to do something about it, but she doesn't really want to get in trouble because she's noticed that every other person that tries to stick up for this issue seems to only just get the consequences of it. So she does something in her school to try to help the other girls in her school and the school and town essentially don't really follow it. But she may or may not start to see a movement happen within her own school and community. This book, you're probably gonna think main word is feminism. Honestly, yes, it is. This girl does some work to get the sexist ways out of her school and town. And honestly, it's such an interesting concept, the way she formulates her plans around her friends and family and the way it's taken on by the school in both a positive and negative light, I find personally is just really, really, really well done. So you're looking for a recommendation that has a main focus on social issues and a main focus on racism. Then you have arrived 
arrived at one recommendation. The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. The Hate You Give is a book I read recently this past summer. I actually annotated it and took some notes and gave it a four out of five stars myself. This book has also been recently turned into a movie over the last couple years and it received highly fantastic reviews. This book essentially follows around our main protagonist, a star, and she lives in a predominantly black community but attends a predominantly white school and it kind of dives into her, her issues with kind of living two separate lives, being two separate people depending on where she is, trying to navigate all of that and also trying to deal with the death of her friend due to police brutality. This book does dive into some heavy issues but the family bonds you see happen and form, the way Star grows as a person, I feel all make this book just such 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 a good read and also bring light some really important issues in our world today. So you're interested in reading a fantasy fiction kind of book? Well this is actually personally my favorite type of stuff to dive into so I'm especially excited to talk about all these recommendations with you now. So first up, are you looking for a standalone or a series? Whichever one you choose, please go to this part in the video. So you're looking for a standalone? Then I have two recommendations for you. Are you looking for a traditional set in the future with enhanced technology kind of world? Or something similar to our world but with a twist on death? For the first prompt, I have chosen Ready Player One to recommend to you all. Ready Player One is a book I read three years ago and really, really, really enjoyed and it was one of my favorite standalones of the year. I will say the movie does not do this book justice, so if you're thinking of reading the book but don't really want to commit to the book, Commit to the book anyways because the movie is just not as good. This book is set in 2045 and follows our main character Wade Watts and essentially there is this whole technology called the Oasis and essentially the Oasis is a virtual reality universe where people put on their headsets and go anywhere they want and can make virtual money to buy actual items in the real world and the real world has kind of fallen disaster to different natural disasters and essentially everyone uses the virtual reality to escape their real world. Many jobs are found in the virtual reality etc etc the creator dies and he doesn't really have any kids or family to give all his money to or the rights to the Oasis to, so he actually holds a competition. So whoever can find this hidden easter egg within the Oasis can actually get all this money and all the rights to the game and so essentially whoever wins has the most power in the world over the rest of society. It's a really really good book and I would highly recommend it. Written really well, the story is really interesting, captivating, it's fast paced and action packed, but full of 80s pop culture references if you're into that kind of stuff as well and I really really would recommend it. For the second prompt I am recommending They Both Die in the End by Adam Silvera. This book is set in our world today but however has a main difference. There's a company called Deathcast and essentially you can receive a call at any given given day between the times of 12 and 3 a.m. and if you do it's gonna be a call from Deathcast. Deathcast knows when you're gonna die. They don't know how, they don't know why, they just know you're gonna die within the next 24 hours. So everyone in the society will get a call in the morning 24 hours essentially before they're going to die and no one knows when within that day they're going to die or how they're going to, they just know that they are going to. And so it kind of gives people a last chance to say goodbye or do any lasting things they've always been wanting to do. And so this book, the theme is really really cool and the way it ties in friendship and relationships together and also figuring out how to use your last day to the optimal amount is just such a cool thing to read about because you don't necessarily get to experience this concept in the real world today. So this book is this long and it takes place over 24 hours. The ending of this book is absolutely crazy and even though you may expect it, it's still like crazy when it actually happens and I really enjoyed this book and really really would highly recommend it. So you're looking to commit a little bit longer to a series, however something to consider is what you're focusing on. Would you like to focus for your recommendation on a future with an enhancement to technology, a dystopian or a fantasy? So you're looking for a future with enhancement to technology and you have arrived at one recommendation, Warcross by Marie Lu. Warcross essentially follows our world I believe a hundred years in the future, ten years in the future, some odd years into the future, where essentially technology plays a huge part and how people live their lives. Essentially it kind of follows your virtual reality futuristic type world and we follow our main character Amika Chen who's poor, doesn't really have too much money, is still trying to get by best she can. And to do so she's a hacker, tries to make money that way. And the main technology in this world is actually created by this man named Hideo. And Hideo is Amika's like inspiration for life essentially. She admires him so so much and everything he's done. Somehow, some way, she does something that actually infiltrates his technology. Warcross. And 
for some reason she ends up roped into this huge world she never knew she could be a part of. And I think the synopsis of this book can sum it up a little bit better than I can, but this is a, actually a duology, so it's only two books. The second book, even better than this already amazing first book. I have videos on both of them. They are both absolutely amazing and books I would highly, highly recommend. Maria Lu is a fantastic author. Her books are all, all her books are fantastic. This book is no different. So you're looking for a dystopian book. You've come across two recommendations. Are you looking for something more romantically focused or action and rebellion focused? If you're more interested in the first prompt, then I would highly recommend to you this selection by Kira Cass. This section follows a world unlike our own, where essentially all citizens are put into castes. I think that's how you say it. Essentially, if you're in caste one, you are royalty. You are the top tier of humanity, essentially. And if you're at number seven, you are homeless, you have no rights, no one cares about you, etc. Essentially, if you're in the top one, two, three categories, you're going to be really well off in life. And every time you take a step down, your life is just essentially going to get worse and worse. So we follow our main character, America, who is a five. So her family is not well off, but could be doing worse. I will say it has been a while since I've read this book, but I remember having such good feelings about it. And I love rereading the series so much because I just get so many magical vibes from it. So in this world, there is royalty and the prince has come of age and he's trying to find a wife. Okay. And so the way, the way they do this is through tradition. And the tradition is using the selection process. So essentially in every state, if you want to call it, one girl is picked from a lottery to compete for the prince's love. And that's essentially the whole competition. So people often describe this books as a mix between The Bachelor and The Hunger Games due to the cutthroat vibes of the competition, the topics they talk about, as well as the love interest part as well, as this essentially is The Bachelor in real life for this country. This is a three book series. However, it does continue on to two more books, which are more of an optional part of the series, I would say, but all parts are very good. If you're looking for a more lighthearted book with some great memorable characters, some great moments and quotes that just are fantastic. The selection is a lighthearted, fantastic series that I would highly, highly recommend. If the second prompt more, sounded a little bit more interesting to you, then I would recommend the one and only Hunger Games novels by Suzanne Collins. If you don't know what this book is about, I'll be kind of surprised to be honest, but there are movies for this if you're interested. There's actually four. The Hunger Games movie are also fantastic as well, but I also just love this series with all my heart. It was the first series that got me into reading, and I recently reread the first book this summer, which I gave a five out of five stars. I'd recommend looking at the synopsis of this book because honestly, I'll just get too emotional talking about this book because it just is absolutely amazing in every way. The characters are great, the plot is great, the development is great. It's just fantastic. I love it so much. Look up the synopsis, but if, if this concept sounds interesting to you and you're interested in a futuristic society where people have to fight to the death for basic human rights and an overpowerful government, it's just it's great. What else can I say? So you're looking for a fantasy recommendation. Are you looking for a focus on fairy tales, death, magical abilities, or a whole new world focusing around humans versus fairies and other mythical creatures? So you're interested in a rec following around fairy tales? Well, you've arrived at one recommendation, The School for Good and Evil. This is actually a six book long series, the sixth book coming out this coming June, and I actually just love this series so much. I have a bunch of videos about them if you want to check them out, but this book essentially follows two best friends, Sophie and Agatha. They live in a small town that no one could ever seem to leave, but no one really minds too much. Agatha wears black, lives in a graveyard with her mother, has a black cat, is sad and angry all the time, and is lonely. That's kind of who she is as a person. Sophie, on the other hand, wears pink and dresses and tries to do good deeds and all that kind of things. Especially wants to have a better life than the one she's currently living. Every four years in this town, two kids are mysteriously taken away. One that's seemingly good and one seemingly evil. They end up seeing these children coming back a few years in storybooks that appear at the town's bookshop. That's how they find out that the kids taken are actually part of real fairy tales. So it's kind of a surprise to everyone when Sophie and Agatha are taken. However, at first glance, you think Sophie is going to the school for good and Agatha is going to the school for evil. However, who knows what might happen next. This book dives into some great themes. This book, I will say, while slightly being problematic, is a great book. And overall, the series just gets better and better with each book. The way the romance and friendships and themes develop in each book is just better and better each time. And honestly, I'm so, so, so excited for the sixth book because I can only imagine the, con the satisfying conclusion we're finally gonna get after all these years of waiting. I'd recommend looking up a better synopsis than what I just explained because this series is actually a really, really cool concept and I really, really enjoyed it overall. So you're interested on a fantasy novel about death? Well, congrats, you've arrived at one recommendation. 
First Life. First Life is kind of similar to our world in a sense, with a huge major twist. Basically, when you're alive, you have to declare your soul to one of two afterlifes. And essentially, a lot of people take the time thinking about where they want to live in their second life. As people know, this is an actual thing. Rather than our world, people really aren't sure what's going on. So our main character, Ten, she is trying to decide where she wants to live her ever life, which is her second life. And her parents want her to choose one way because they've been promised a lot of money and fame if her daughter goes with this certain side. However, the other side is also compelling to her, and she's essentially trying to figure out throughout the course of the novel where she wants to live. The circumstances for her are dire. She's been tortured for many years, I think, trying to pick one side versus the other. And throughout the story, she gets compelled to both sides and trying to figure out what's best for her in many different ways. The way we see self-discovery, friendships and relationships form, family relationships are tested in this book, I think is really, really good. And overall, it's just such a cool concept to read about. So we are interested a little more in a super magical world with an interest on fairies versus humans and other magical creatures. Now, I don't really know how else to describe this book, but in case you don't know, I am talking about The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. Personally, I read this book on audiobook and I'm currently reading the second book in the trilogy and I absolutely love it with all of my heart. It's kind of hard to describe, but I want you to look up a synopsis if you've come all this way because this book is phenomenal. I'll try my best. So essentially we have a human girl named Jude and from a young age, Jude has been taken away from the human world and into the world of fairy. Humans are kind of treated at a different level that fairies are like at a lower level and so she's had to work extra hard her whole life to be accepted in the fairy community and she's worked as hard as she can to become accepted and to have power and she throughout the course of the book you see her struggle with trying to get power and doing the right thing all at the same time protecting who she cares about and overall the, the lives of everyone in the fairy world it is such a good book the way she holly black writes it is phenomenal the characters are phenomenal the audiobook is great the plot is great there's never a dull moment in this book i love it so much i give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and it's one of my top reads of the year so you're looking for a recommendation in the fantasy category focusing around magical abilities i have four recommendations for you are you looking for a story with a princess protagonist a book that follows the wow I have powers trope, a magical adventure, or the chosen one trope. So if you're interested in a princess protagonist, other royalty, and magical abilities, then Shadow Frost is for you. Recently I actually had the chance to meet Coco Ma, the author of this book, and absolutely loved hearing all she had to say about it. This is her debut novel, and this is actually the first book in a trilogy. And so I loved this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I found the princess herself so awesome. Her abilities were so cool. I loved all the characters we saw in this book and the way betrayal and secrets really come out in this book is so so cool and I absolutely loved it and honestly I'm shocked how good this book is for a debut novel. It's fantastic. It deals with a whole bunch of different magical elements focusing around the magical abilities of using the physical elements. I believe in this book she uses nine if i want to remember correctly ten i don't know there's a whole lot of things she dives into but the magic is really well done the plot is really cool and it's just overall such a good book essentially in this kingdom there has been a threat to her community and she wants to try to stop it and do what many talented soldiers have failed to do so she along with a couple of her friends and guards ends up going on this quest to try to defeat this magical beast that no one knows what it is or why it is killing people and hurting people in her kingdom it's a phenomenal book and i really Really, really would highly recommend it. So you're interested in the wow I have powers trope? For that I would recommend Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard, one of my all-time favorite series. This book essentially follows a world where there's two types of people, reds and silvers. Reds are people that have red blood, silvers are people that have silver blood. If you are a red, you are like you and I. However, if you have silver blood, you are blessed with some kind of magical ability, whether it be controlling fire, water, reading minds, whatever the thing is where you can lift objects off the ground, etc. Reds, however, don't have powers and so they're essentially treated like the servants and workers of the world while the silvers get to enjoy the luxuries that the reds don't have. So it essentially follows our main character Mary Barrow who is sick of living her sucky life being overshadowed by her younger sister and is just tired of never being enough and never finding her purpose in life. With her best friend going to be sent off to the war soon she does everything she can to try to get them both not in the war and in doing so she ends up being roped into this world she never knew existed, never knew was even possible, and finding own things about herself she never knew before. I love this series. It is a four book long series with an additional short story collection that just came out a few months ago earlier this year. I love it and would highly recommend this series. It, it kind of has my heart. It's just 
it's it's fantastic so you're looking for a magical adventure magical ability story for that i have my current favorite series the shades of magic trilogy and the first book being called the darker shade of magic by v.e schwab this book is fabulous. Needless to say, if I had to recommend one book in this whole video, it would be the Shades of Magic trilogy. It is fabulous. It is so good. It is written amazingly. This book it's kind of hard to explain, at least for me, a little bit, but it takes place in a world where there is London, much like our London, except there's four of them. We have Grey London, Red London, White London, and Black London. The Grey London is much like our London in the 1800s. Red London is a London full of magic. White London is losing its magic, and the people are starting to get more aggressive in that London, in that world. And Black Magic has actually been eaten up by magic and is cut off from the rest of the world. Most people can't travel between the different Londons, except for Antares, which is what, what our main character, Cal, is. He essentially can travel the different worlds and communicate to as many people as he wants with the powers he has. In this world we see a mix of blood magic and elemental magic as well as some strong amazing characters, different points of views, and just overall such an interesting plot, concept, slow build romance. It's absolutely fantastic and this book is just absolutely amazing in every single way. I just love it so much. If you want to read more about it, check out Goodreads and check out the synopsis online. I would highly recommend it so much and this series is honestly just one of my faves. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars and if that doesn't say enough, I don't know what will. So you're interested in a book with magical abilities that uses the chosen one trope. Now surprisingly this is not Harry Potter, but in fact Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Often called a Harry Potter but gay fanfic, this is a book Rainbow Rowell put out a couple years ago and I just love so much. I I think I read this book for the second time over the summer and really really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars and it's overall just such a fun great read. We follow our main character Simon Snow who is the chosen one who is set to defeat this magical beast in the world. However Simon Snow can barely get his wand to work half the time let alone defeat some crazy beast. So every year he goes off to Watford the magical school in this world trying to figure out how he's going to deal with the next coming school year and all that is to come. There's many aspects of relationships and friendships that are dived in here as well as a cool use of magic and a different take on it than something you might see in Harry Potter or something you traditionally think of school with magic. I love this book. It's a fun read and it's actually being turned into a series. I don't know how many books long but the second book just came out. It was also a fantastic light-hearted fun read and overall I would just recommend this series because it's fun. The characters are so fun to read about and you just want to hear more and more and more about all of them and what they're doing in their lives. Okay, hi. So I'm just editing this video and I realized that I actually completely forgot to talk about Radio Silence, which is one of my favorite standalones of the entire year. In fact, one of my favorite books of the entire year and just books that I've ever read. So I want to jump in here and just quickly describe and let you know what it's all about. First off, I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. I just loved it so much. I've actually read it twice this year via the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. I recently bought the physical copy, so I'm going to try to read that soon, see if it's like as good, if I like it via the physical book or the audiobook more. Basically, we follow Frances, who is in her final year of high school, and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. Her goal, since as long as she can remember, has been to go to Cambridge to study English literature. Everyone knows her in her school as the head girl of her academy, super smart, kind of quiet, but knows she's going to Cambridge to have a successful future. However, what a lot of people don't know about her is that she's actually a huge fangirl for the YouTube podcast University, and she actually loves drawing and makes a lot of fan art and posts it on Tumblr and interacts a lot with the fandom. And throughout the course of the book, you see her think of a lot about her decisions for university and also a lot about university and her passions for drawing and how the two kind of intersect along with the friendships she makes along the way. She ends up having this best friend named Alad Lass and their relationship is just so amazing. I love them together. It's not even like they're romantically inclined. It's just such a great friendship and the friendship they have together build with other people is also really good. The intense moments in this book are absolutely crazy. Like I was just listening in a panic. I was like, I can't believe this is happening. This book, honestly, I can't find a single flaw with it. It's just so good. And I, as a high school student, gonna graduate next year, I can really relate to a lot of the themes in this book. So I would say that if you're in high school, especially like grade 11 or 12, or in the early years of college or university, I would definitely say this is like the prime time to read this book because I know I relate a whole lot to it. And I'm sure if you're anything like me, you will as well. It's one of my favorite books of the year. I have a video that talks more about it if you're interested, but honestly, like, there's a whole lot of LGBTQ plus rep in it as well. It's just wholesome friendships, 
fandoms. It's such a good book and I honestly just love it so much. So this is also one of the main books on this whole video that I would recommend. So if it sounds of interest to you, I would highly, highly recommend it. So that is all the recommendations I have today. If you want any more, just watch the video from the beginning and go different directions to see how many different books you can find. I think I have quite a few looking at the mess on my floor from all the books that I have just finished talking about. But these are all the books that I recommend. I really have thoroughly enjoyed and honestly hope that some of you all can really enjoy as well. Whether you're a reader that reads every single day or once a year, I hope you can find something on this list that you will enjoy and just hopefully start to like reading for because honestly, like I said, it's my purpose in life to find, help people find a book they'll actually enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below if there's any book that I mentioned in this video that you might actually try to read for yourself or if you've actually read any of the ones I've already recommended and your thoughts on them. I really enjoyed filming this video and talking about all these books, so I hope you all enjoyed it as well. I will see you all very soon with a new video, so until then, bye.